521. He who knew no sin became sin. God made him sin. Okay. So how can you say he was perfect if God made him sin? Not 2 Jesus, Corinthians 5, 21. That wasn't talking about Jesus. Pull it up. It's not talking about Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Paul talking about Jesus. He knew no sin. You say he knew no sin. Right. Yeah, but God made him sin. He said the one who did not know sin, he, he, made, sin. he made to be sin for us. So that by means of him, we might become God's righteous. So that's because Jesus died for us he to take away sin, our sin. Right? right, he did. So how can he be perfect? He didn't take on our sin in that sense. He took on our sin and uh, our, our, on our sin in the sense that he died for us so that we will not in the future. This is all part of Bible prophecy. If you know Bible prophecy, there's hundreds of years passed before actual fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So this is part of Bible prophecies that in the future, we won't have sin. So we won't, we won't have, have sin. No, we won't. Why don't we still die? We die now because of what Adam and Eve did. But Jesus supposed to took our punishment. Not now, because we still have to prove ourselves righteous. We have to prove ourselves righteous. We have to do God's will. That's what Jesus taught. But it just says that Jesus became sin for us, correct? He didn't become sin. He, he made a means for us to, to, to our sins to be taken away. So you didn't just read it right now what he said? He it didn't say he became sin. sin. It didn't say that. It says it by me, it says, the one who did not know sin, he made to be sin okay. for us, so right that there. by means of him, we might become God's righteousness. So it's saying it right there. So he's Jesus not. became sin for us. But how would Jesus become sin? I just told happen? you, God made him who knew no sin to be sin. Okay, right? so if that were the case, then what is that point? What does that prove to you? It's saying that. Jesus supposed to took our sin. Mm -hmm. He took on our sin. That's why God mm -hmm. turned his back and he couldn't look at Jesus. He abandoned him on the cross. Mm -hmm. Okay. If he took our sin and he died in our place, why do we still have to die for our sins? He did that to give us the opportunity again in the future. This is that was part of Bible prophecy. That. Well, if you read not just this scripture, there's other scriptures that tell us what we need to do in order to gain. But he done everything already. He died for our sins. He died for our sins. He said it is finished. He did everything. Well, he did in a sense, but not in a sense. Obviously, it's not for the, the fulfillment is, has not yet been reached. It's like the scripture in Revelation. You know, you, the very one of the last books of the Bible, it talks about Revelations um, 21. In verse four, because well, in verse three and four, it says, with that I heard a loud voice from the throne say, look, the tent of God is with mankind and he will reside with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them and he will wipe out every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. Neither will mourning or outcry or pain be anymore. It says the former things have passed away. So Jesus gave... He was part of Bible prophecy, the fulfillment, because we, we know these things, we still have we still have pain, we still have death. But Jesus said it was finished on the cross, right? No, not, not yet. It was finished with him because he died for our sins. But we still have to do, you know, you, we, so if Jesus so died for Jesus us. Jesus didn't finish it. He, he finished it in the sense that he died for us. So that means that we have an obligation when Jesus died for us, you weren't even born. I wasn't even born. So, yeah, so we how still we know it's true. Because that's what the scriptures say. You know? That's you don't, what the you don't believe say. that men can lie? I don't believe. Let me show you another scripture that maybe will help a little bit. This is what the Bible says about people who um, try to change the scriptures and lie. Um, it has been changed and altered. The scriptures have been changed. Not the, the Bible. I don't know, yeah, and, I mean, and there are the Bible, there are different Bibles. Books missing and all kinds of stuff. In there. Well, the Bible even talks about in the future in, in paradise, there there could be new scrolls open to us. So it may not be missing. Maybe it's just something we won't understand. So God is like, I can't give that to them right now because they won't understand it. 
No, I'm saying you got the King James 1611. Mm -hmm. It's books missing from from in the middle of uh, the Old and New Testament. It's called Apocrypha. Mm -hmm. So if you get if you have a 1611, they took those books out of. And I believe the same way they took God's name. They took God's name out of the original Bible. So why should did you know that? Well, that's what I'm saying. You have to have a trust worthy bible there's obviously they can be bibles that that's happened because they took god's name out you know and it's funny because they took god's name out when i was a kid when i would run across people and i talked to them and they didn't have god's name where it was supposed to be in the bible and they would have in the front of their bible a preface that would say we took god's name out now they don't have anything they just took it out and don't have anything they don't explain why they're taking it out or nothing but God's name was in the original Bible over 7,000 times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know. You think Jesus is supposed to come back? When you think Jesus is supposed to come back? We don't know. He said, I'm coming quickly. Right. Like a thief in the night. But he said that 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And like I said, Bible prophecies is not our time. You he know, told his a, day, a day to a day to God is 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day. He the day to us is 24 hours. He told his disciples, there are some of you standing here who will not taste death until you see me return. What do you think that means? Who would not taste death until... They will not die until they see him come back. I don't know. I would have to read the context of that. Would I, when you say that to me, I'm thinking that they're talking about death, the second death, like once you... You know, all these other Bible prophecies have been fulfilled and, and God says, OK, and let's say, you know, I don't know if you've heard about, you know, Satan being abyss for a thousand years and then he's going to be let loose. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. When once he's let loose again, then people that have been come back to perfection, then he's going to go out. And those who don't listen at that point, because they will be in the same situation as Adam and Eve. Perfect. Jesus said he will return in his generation. Okay. They believe that. In his generation? Yeah, they believe it. Mm -hmm. Even if you read Revelations 1, if you start at 1, mm -hmm. uh, verses, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says, these things must take place shortly, quickly, soon. Everything that's written in Revelations had to happen oh, yeah. <laughs> in that generation. Otherwise, why is he saying shortly, quickly, and soon? If it don't mean that. Right. I would have to look at what scripture you said. Revelations chapter 1, verses chapter 1. Quickly and soon. But again, that's. 1, 2, 3. That depends on what the context was. You know, we have to read all of the context. We can't just um, read one part of it. But what I'd like to do, because she has to go to the bathroom and they're waiting for me at the car. But what was your name? Jerry. Jerry. I'm Yvonne. This is my niece, Alana. Maybe I can leave this with you. And if you get a chance, there's a QR code on the back. If you scan it, it's going to bring you to a awesome website. And you know, some of the things that convinces me that we're that what we're believing is the truth is because of everything, even the website. You know, and on this website, in a snap of a finger, there's over over a thousand languages. You go to the top of the page. I don't even care if it's a dialect in Africa. It it's there. So the oh, thing. I want to ask you this one uh -huh. more thing. Is, uh -huh. is the 144,000, is that men and women or just all men? No, it's both. It's in the Because my Bible says that it's all men. No. And see, I would like to see that too. Yeah, it's in the it's King not, James. Yeah, it's not all men. It's, it's men and from women. From the tribe from, of Israel. Right, right. And it says. You from the tribe of Israel? No. But that's what the 144,000 are from. I'm not part of the 144,000. You were Jehovah's we, Witness, right? No, we don't think. See, that's the misconception oh. that people think when they hear 144,000 that we're thinking, oh, all Jehovah's Witnesses. No, we have over 8 million, almost close to 9 million witnesses all over the world right now. So obviously, that 144,000 is a very, very small part of anything. So we're, we're, none of us believe, most of us don't believe that we're part of that 144,000. Because the Bible also gives a lot of evidence of what I mean, a part of that one point four thousand is. But I, you know, but I'd love to come back with my husband and maybe we can talk a little bit more.